everybody, welcome to an Epic Mod AM Toys video. Today I have your WWE Extreme Rules 2020 Horror Show Full Show results and review for you guys. You guys already know how this thing works. We're going to break down the entire WWE Extreme Rules 2020 card, tell you exactly what took place at the show, what I liked, what I didn't like, my own personal thoughts and opinions on all the matches, the feuds coming in, where I think we go from here, any sick-ass attires or anything in between, you will also find out, and I will give you my own thoughts on it. Now, coming into this show, I was kind of intrigued by a few points. You know, it was it was dubbed the horror show, and being a big horror guy and a big horror fan, I was excited for that to an extent. You know, I was excited to see what WWE would give us. You know, uh, the the eye for an eye match. I was kind of intrigued to see where that would go. The swamp fight. My boy Kevin Owens made his appearance onto the show at the last minute, so you know, I was kind of looking forward to it. Would it be absolutely horrible? Would it be good or somewhere in between? We're gonna find out here together. I'm gonna review this full show for you guys. Sit back, relax, and let's dive into WWE Extreme Rules 2020. That makes me think of it. You know, 2020's been a horror show in itself, so maybe that's why they added that to the, to the show name. Anyways, let's shut the hell up and get into the show. Alright guys, so starting off with the kickoff show, we had two of my favorites, man. We had my boy Kevin Owens, probably my favorite current wrestler in all of wrestling today. Going up with one of the most underrated talents that I think can do a lot of work on his own and a dream match in itself. I've been wanting to see this match with a lot of time on a pay-per-view. I know it's on the kickoff show, but these guys still put on a banger matchup. Did anybody else think about the MDT Hell's Gate Extreme Championship match when you saw this matchup between Kevin Owens and Buddy Murphy? Let me know down in the comment section below. But this matchup was just like the one in MDT, man. It was high-paced, high-action, very good technology going on inside the ring, man. I mean, these guys are great. The, the chemistry was so there. I want to see these guys in a match again longer. I just think that these are two of your best workers, man. They put on a great show here. I know it was kickoff show, but a great way to kick off this show. Very high paced, very impactful. Kevin Owens kind of put Buddy Murphy away kind of quickly like it wasn't a long match. This match was probably 8 to 10 minutes at max, but I think what we got for the energy and for, for the hype around it and the, and the stuff they gave us in this short matchup was pretty significantly great. And I know that was a weird way to phrase it, but it was damn good. I loved it. Kevin Owens gets the win, thank God. Even though Buddy Murphy might have gotten a win, that would have been nice to see. Maybe this can lead to Buddy Murphy leaving Seth Rollins or something. I think he should. I think we should get a Buddy Murphy-Seth Rollins match very soon. But I'm so glad that KO got the win here, building up some momentum. Maybe we'll see him go after the U.S. title, possibly. Maybe make his way into the world title, picture. We'll have to see, but Kevin Owens picks up a great kickoff show victory over Buddy Murphy. Next up, guys, we have the Tag Team Championship match, specifically to SmackDown, between the New Day and Shinsuke and Cesaro. Shinsuke and Cesaro did get to pick the stipulation for this matchup, and they chose a tables match since they had been putting the New Day through tables, trying to put them through tables. I mean, it was pretty obvious what they were going to choose. They picked the tables match. This matchup was great. I think this is a great opening matchup. Very fun, very creative. You know, usually in a tables match, uh, guys are super limited. You know, we've seen it. It's very repetitive, same kind of garbage, but all four of these guys did a good job of creating a fresh matchup. The the spots were unique. There were some good back and forth, some good reversals. And at the end of the day, they set up two tables on the outside. And Cesaro loads Kofi Kingston up with Shinsuke's help. He, like, kicks him, loads him up into a powerbomb, and powerbombs him through two tables to the outside. And Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura are your new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And I really enjoyed this match. I thought this was a great opener. I thought that uh, all four men brought it, as I said. The chemistry is so great. And Cesaro, man, I mean, you can literally pair this guy with anybody, right? You could put this guy with anybody on the roster in a tag team, and he's probably going to give you a damn good football game and a good tag team title reign, man. I mean, this this was good stuff, man. This was really good stuff. I recommend you go back and watch this match if you missed it. So far, we are two for two on matches. Kevin Owens and Buddy Murphy did a good job, and then this one was a good way to open the show up. Very fresh, very nice, and I enjoyed this title change. You know, I think, you know, New Day gets a bit stale after they've captured it this many times. Cesaro is now, I think, a seven-time tag team champion which is kind of ridiculous. Shinsuke gets his first tag team title reign. Hopefully they can bring some prestige back to the division. But this matchup was fun, man. Really fun matchup. Great way to start out the show. Next up, guys, we have the first of our two women's championship matches. Bayley defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Nikki Cross with Alexa Bliss and Sasha Banks in their respective corners of their ladies. And, uh, you know, this matchup, it started out hot. I thought the intensity was there. The only thing that I can't really get behind, I'm not very involved in this. I don't really care the outcome because I know that Bayley's going to win, right? I mean, I'm coming in. I, I, I want to see a good matchup, but at the same time, I know deep down Bayley's going to win this thing. They're looking for the Sasha Bayley clash that we're eventually going to get at either SummerSlam or 
Survivor Series or whenever they book that matchup. So I think that kind of took some of the air out of this matchup, just knowing what I know. But a standalone match wasn't bad at all. Would I go back and watch it? Probably not, just because I'm not invested in it. I'm more of what's invested in the long run. But at the end of the matchup, Sasha Banks slides her brass knucks in there and hits Nikki Cross with it, probably leading to another match on SmackDown is what I would guess because Bayley does smack Nikki Cross with it, knocking her unconscious, getting the win, and it was due to Sasha Banks' help with the brass knucks. Got clashes, uh, got flashes of old William Regal in this hoe. But besides that, nothing more to add. Bayley does retain. I'm satisfied with that. I am still waiting on my Sasha Banks versus Bayley matchup that we will eventually get to. Still not a fan of Bliss and Cross as a tag team. Next up, guys, we have a United States Championship match, but it's not even a match. Apparently, Apollo Crews did not pass his pre-match physical, and therefore, he cannot compete. Therefore, this match is not going to take place. So, MVP and Bobby Lashley come out. MVP declares himself new United States champion. He gets the title, and that was it. That was literally the segment. The commentary said that Apollo Crews couldn't pass his physical because Bobby Lashley hurt him with the full Nelson on Monday Night Raw, leading to an injury that prevented him from competing here tonight. But I think I think Apollo Crews must have tested positive um, for the virus, is what I'm guessing, because, I don't know, I just don't see that taking place. This match should have happened. I, I'm guessing that Apollo Crews probably tested positive. If he did, I hope for a quick and speedy recovery for him. Prayers out to Apollo Crews and his family for a quick and speedy recovery for him to bounce right back and, you know, hopefully he's really asymptomatic. He can take care of himself and get right back in the ring as U.S. champion. But this segment was pretty much nothing. Not a match, not nothing. MVP pretty much cutting a promo, getting the title, and walking away. No interference or anything like that. It was literally just MVP and Bobby in the ring. Next up, guys, we had the eye for an eye match between Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio, a matchup that I was actually very much looking forward to. I know both guys can go. I'm a huge Rollins guy, and I know that Rey Mysterio is one of the best workers of all time, right? I mean, the, the man can go with pretty much anybody, the way he can reverse, the way he can move in the ring, and this was no different. This was a very good match, very enjoyable match, and entertaining. They did a great job telling the story. I thought the intensity was there, the reversals, the action was fantastic, lots of great creative ways trying to get the eye out of the guy. You know, the, the storyline is what it is, you know, the eye for an eye. Uh, it's definitely outside of the box. I like my wrestling to be a little outside the box sometimes, and this, this, this played perfectly. I actually was invested in this. I thought they good, did a good job building up to it. I didn't like the involvement of everybody involved. Think, you know, just Dominic and Ray, and then the Monday Night Messiah and Murphy and Theory would have been great instead of getting Owens and Black and Humberto and all these other guys involved. But this matchup was good. I liked it. I thought the match overall was pretty damn good, man. I, I just think that the end of it, I think what killed it was the end of the matchup. At the end of the match, Seth Rollins takes Ray's head and he puts it on the stairs and he matches his eye. Like we saw in the other eye from Monday Night Raw, he also curb stomped him. I thought he was going to curb stomp his eye onto the steel steps. I thought that would have been pretty cool. But I just hated how, uh, I guess, it was just not very, it was anticlimactic, I guess, when we got the final spot for the eye for an eye. So Seth Rollins does win. He smashes Rey Mysterio's eye into the steel steps, leading to the match to call for the match. And Seth Rollins looks over at Ray and he goes to the corner and pukes. And I thought that was great. I actually wanted him to puke. He did puke. I actually liked that. I thought that was great. It added to the realism of it. The only thing I didn't like was just there was no blood. It was just anticlimactic. He literally put out his eye the way he did on Raw, which I did not like. But the match overall was great. It was just the ending I didn't like. After the match, Seth kind of looks around. Everybody's booing him. And he's kind of like, you know, oh my God. Like, I don't know. It just kind of seemed, what the hell did I just do is kind of how he was acting. But overall, I enjoyed the match, man. It was actually a really good match. I just didn't like the ending. I felt like something better could have happened. Something more creative could have happened. But no Dominic help or anything. Dominic comes coming out at the end. You know, you'd think if your father's eye was legit getting poked out, you would have ran out way before uh, Seth Rollins actually put his eye on the steel step. So I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Overall, great match. I like the storytelling, but there was a few things here and there that I was just like, eh, I don't know about that one, Brad. But Seth Rollins does win the eye for an eye match. Well, Brad, if you thought the Seth Rollins Rey Mysterio eye for an eye match was the most confusing match all night, you'd be wrong. Next up is the Raw Women's Championship match between Asuka taking on Sasha Banks, Bayley, and Kyrie Sane in their respective corners, just like we saw in the SmackDown Women's Championship match. Coming in, we all knew this match would be fire, man. I mean, you got two of the best women's workers in the world right here going one-on-one. -on -one. This is a damn good game. This is a damn good football game right here, man. I mean, what did you expect? I expected nothing less. Lots of shenanigans in this match, which I feel like we haven't seen 
shenanigans like this in a matchup where it doesn't end the match quite yet. You know, usually it's like one pair of shenanigans and the match is over. This matchup had shenanigans all covered in the ending, man. It was really good. Guys got Sasha and Asuka going back and forth trying to get the pinfall. I can't even remember how the events occurred, man. Like, Sasha, Sasha was, was about to tap to the Asuka lock. Bailey throws her championship in the ring and then Sasha taps, but the ref's not looking, so Bailey gets inside the ring with the title. She turns around and the ref's like, what the hell's going on? Get the hell out of the ring. Sasha rolls up Asuka. Asuka rolls up Sasha. Back and forth, back and forth. Then Asuka gets the green mist in. She tries to hit Sasha with the green mist. Hits the referee. Referee goes down. Bailey hits Asuka in the back of the skull with the championship. I think she's going to just cover, you know, Asuka with Sasha. And one, two, three. She rips the referee's shirt off. She rips his damn shirt off. I'm thinking, okay, is she going to wipe the referee's eyes and then have him be able to see? Because you remember, the green mist is in his eyes. He can't see what's going on. Bailey hits Asuka with the title. I'm like, okay, she's going to wipe his eyes and it's going to be one, two, three. That's going to be it. She puts the referee's shirt on, pins the matchup. She becomes the referee. Apparently, the shirt's what gives you the power. One, two, three. Asuka loses. That's the match. She she demands that they ring the bell. I don't know if we're going to have ourselves a dead gum Razor Ramon HBK. I'm the real champion situation. John Cena, CM Punk. I'm the real champion. I don't know what they're going to do here, but uh, this was super confusing, man. I was like, what the hell's going on? Like, I, I thought that they could have just had her, like, wipe the referee's eyes unless they just don't want it to be, you know, a, a real legit win for Sasha. Sha Sasha can't catch a break when winning championships, man. It's either fake, she wins it somehow, or she only holds it for, like, 12 days. I don't know, man. Just very, very interesting stuff right there. G great match. Again, great match. I enjoyed the match thoroughly. Very weird ending to the to the, to the the match right there. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I I'm very confused on this one. I really just wanted Sasha to win. Uh, Dirty is fine. I just wanted her to win so we could have all the championships on both. I'm not sure if this is a legit championship win or not. I, I don't know. I'm very confused by this ending. Is, is Sasha a legit champ or not? I guess we'll have to find out. I'm sure she is. But uh, I'm looking forward to the clash of Bayley and Sasha come Survivor Series or SummerSlam. I'm guessing they'll defend the tag titles of SummerSlam, lose the tag titles. That'll be the crack in the armor. We'll get our champion versus champion match at Survivor series for both titles and that's how that's what i'm thinking but anyways good match confusing ending Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. You guys know I'm a big Dolph Ziggler fan coming in. I actually did record my reaction to this video, or to this matchup, I should say, just in case Dolph Ziggler won, you know? We didn't know what the stipulation was coming in. Uh, Dolph Ziggler decided before the match that it was extreme rules for him and that Drew McIntyre had to perform under regular rules. This matchup was good. I actually enjoyed this match a lot. I know I was super invested because I wanted Dolph to win the WWE Championship. That did not take place. However, there were some good spots in this match. Ziggler, you know, and McIntyre put on a great performance. I thought it was a good matchup. Of course, Ziggler is just a stepping stone on the way to probably Randy Orton at SummerSlam for Drew McIntyre as the big-time heel going up with the big-time babyface. I don't think that Drew's going to lose until we get, uh, you know, live shows again. I just don't see it. I've been saying it since he won the Rumble, and we've had no crowds at these shows. Ziggler with a huge elbow drop off the top rope through a table. He had some good chair spots, some good super kicks, zigzags. I mean, this was an entertaining match. I, I was definitely invested in in it, even though I knew deep down Ziggler would not win. And I feel like if they pushed that envelope a little bit more, had they gotten more closer to an actual pinfall and actually made me believe a little bit more, it would have been more fun. But overall, it was a fun match. I enjoyed it as a Ziggler fan and I thought that, uh, you know, he put on a good game here. Sick attire that he was wearing. I love it. The acid wash with the pink underneath looked great. At the end of the match, Ziggler's getting pumped up. He's throwing chairs out of the ring. He's getting pissed off. Drew hits a kip up. He kips up and then hits a Claymore kick onto Ziggler very sick. Great selling by Ziggler all match. Drew retains the WWE Championship. We all saw it coming, and that was your WWE Championship match. Fun match, like I said. I actually recommend going back and watching this, especially if you're a McIntyre or Ziggler fan. It was definitely worth the watch, and yet again, another match on this show that I enjoyed. And for our main event, guys, we had the Blue Universal Psych. This, this was not a title match. I don't believe this was a title match. I'm pretty sure it was non-title there, so we had the Swamp Fight. We had the Swamp Match Swamp Fight between the Blue Universal Champion Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt. Wyatt. You guys know their ties back when Braun first started in WWE. He was a part of the Wyatt, the Wyatt family, and he was their muscle and running around with the black sheep mask. And this, this was pretty good, you know, not really a match. It was more of like the John Cena and Fiend matchup or Bray Wyatt match that we got from WrestleMania. Very fun. I think it's great when they do stuff like this. You can get really creative. It reminds me a lot of the pick fed about, you know, just a lot of stuff you can do with thinking outside the box kind of stuff. More creative things than just a regular old wrestling match with your, you know, same old storytelling. This was great. I like the imagery. Not sure what we 
go from here, you know, there was a lot of great stuff. It's kind of hard to even explain over uh, over a video me talking to you about it, but I really enjoyed it. I think that you should, uh, if you were expecting a wrestling match, then you're probably really disappointed and didn't like it. But if you're one for storytelling and, and you know, creating kind of like cinematic matches and stuff like that, you definitely need to go check this out on the network. I would highly suggest it. Even if you uh, don't like it, I would still highly suggest you go check it out just so you know what it was about and what happened. It was the same mind game stuff that we've gotten from Bray Wyatt in the past, you know. Uh, I, I One thing I will say is like the guys that were like fighting Braun that were a part of the Wyatt compound or the, you know, the swamp fight made no sense. Like this guy with a random shovel comes out and we've never seen this man before. Just starts attacking Braun with a shovel. He gets set on fire and Braun laughs at him. It was very weird. I thought that was weird. He chains Braun up, cuts a really great promo. Out of nowhere comes this lady in this black veil. I was I thought it was Sister Abigail. She gets this big python. The python strikes at Braun. Braun wakes up in a field, fights some guys off, sets that guy on fire. Then he sees Alexa Bliss in the same black hooded veil. And I was like, oh shit, you could really do something creative right here, right? You could do Alexa Bliss's Sister Abigail this whole time and like do a really cool thought out long storyline. But I guess they didn't want to do that. I think it was just mind games playing back to the, uh, what was it? The It's the, what's it called? Challenge, the Superstar Shake Up Challenge, whatever that thing's called the intergender, you know, challenge that they did where it's like the superstar challenge or whatever the hell that's called, where they take one male, one female superstar, put them together in a tag team tournament, playing into Alexa Bliss and Braun teasing that and, you know, in his head. Braun Strowman kicks Bray Wyatt onto and like slams him onto this boat. The boat goes away. The boat comes back and it's empty. Bray comes out of the water, chokes out Braun, puts him under the water, tries to drown him. We think it's over. He beats the hell out of Braun with an oar. Bray Wyatt comes out, pulls Braun under the water and they're both under the water. The water turns red and out of nowhere, out of the water, we get a full zoomed in shot of The Fiend. The Fiend comes out of the water and he uh, pretty much just, that's how it ends. It's the it's a close up shot of The Fiend. The water's red and The Fiend laughs it up. Now I really don't know what to think of this. I don't know where we go from here. You know, in my fantasy booking video I did talk about how I would like it if maybe Bray mind controls Braun, turns him into the monster again, becomes this massive heel. Sort of like what we got on Vindication where it's like a mass Braun. He's kind of crazy and uh, he's just being mind controlled by Bray Wyatt and The Fiend and he runs rampant on SmackDown. I think you could do something really creative with that. I don't know where we're going from here. I don't know what's next. I guess we'll have to watch SmackDown to find out what's next for Braun Strowman. But I like the creativity. I like the imagery. I like the sounds and everything. I just don't know where we go from here. So I'm excited to see where we go. But I enjoyed the imagery and stuff. It wasn't a match. You know, it's one of those things where it is what it is. But you got to see what's next to find out how good this actually was. But overall, I think I enjoyed Extreme Rules, man. I, I love the tag team opening. I liked uh, both women's matches. I thought Ray and Seth was good besides the ending. I thought that Dolphin Drew was good. I enjoyed this imagery. I'd say overall, good pay-per-view. You know, I, I liked it. I love KO and Buddy Murphy to start the show. The only sleeper match, I would say. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I think standalone match for match. I think this was a pretty damn good football game. Say what you will, but uh, it's getting a thumbs up from me. Now, the booking and, and some other things, some booking things and some decisions made on some certain aspects of the show, I would definitely say thumbs down, but overall as a wrestling show and the pure wrestling and Involved, I would definitely give it a thumbs up. But that's going to do it for my Extreme Rules 2020 review, guys. Let me know what you thought of everything down in the comment section below. I'm probably not going to put up my reaction to Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre because Drew McIntyre did win and Dolph Ziggler didn't win the championship, so there'd be no point, right? I'm just going to be super disappointed. Unless you guys just really want to see that, I don't know. That's going to do it for my Extreme Rules review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Let me know what you thought of the show down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.